Hey, this is Nigel Ng, aka Uncle Roger, and you're listening to the Mo Gilligan Podcast. What's going on, people? You're listening to the Mo Gilligan podcast. Um, my guest that joins me today. Now, um, I've shared the stage with him. We done the King Gong. Yes. We done the King Gong. Yes. And we both won, which was weird, <laughs> but it was still sick at the same time. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, but um, it's a comic that I've shared the stage with that I really like. I, I whenever I have like shows, when, when, like you know, small shows, cracking up comedy, I love getting you on stage because I like watching you as a comic. You know, oh, thanks, as as a, as a comedian, you know, sometimes you watch different comics for different reasons. You're like, oh, I like the way he does that. Or I just like to see how he works. In, but you're just someone that's like to watch just to laugh. Oh, Do you thanks, know what I mean? Thanks, like, I just literally yeah. like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm going to book Nigel because like, I just want to <laughs> chill and just laugh. But I know you're going to deliver at the same time. Uh-huh. And also it's really like amazing in terms of how you've kind of come full circle because like how you have kind of, transitioned from you know stand-up comedy to what you do online with your podcast with um evelyn as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um it's just it's just really good because it's like you know there is this thing where we talk about this diy generation do it yourself and you're someone that's that's done that and i remember when we was at like, cracking up comedy and you was like ask you oh, so how do you like do this with your sketches and and it was just like it was so sick to see because you've seen someone do it you've mm-hmm. seen someone say you know i'm gonna really you know, home in on like what it is for like socials and obviously your sketch with the egg fried rice and not, not egg fried rice, it was rice, right? Just how yeah, to make rice. Just cooking and Asian food in general. Yeah, yeah. And seeing that go viral uh-huh. was just like, I was just really happy for you because oh, I know thanks, what it man. means as a comic to go viral. We're just like, whoa, like you're getting people repost it. People follow you. who you never think would follow you. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes, my guest is Nigel Ng and yeah, Thank you for doing. I say thank you for doing. Of course, it. done it yet? But thank you for joining me, bro. Thank you for joining me, man. Of course, of course. And uh, love and respect goes both ways, man. I love seeing you respect, doing your shows. It's crazy. You have yeah. such charisma and charm on stage. Yeah. Nah, do you know what I like about you, Nigel? Mm-hmm. You're like, I think I remember when I first met you, and we done that show in um, the comedy store. The King, the Gong. King Gong show. Okay. King Gong okay. Show. And I remember just like this guy. I was like, this guy's sick. But every part of me was like. He can't be starting out because you see, I don't know if you know this, but your mannerisms on stage, like someone that's been doing this for like a long time. Does that make sense? You're very mm-hmm. like your materials, very, it, it's like you really trust your material. Do you know what I mean? So what is like your writing process? Oof, um, you, you just come up with an idea. <laughs> yeah. And then like, who, uh, well, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done stand up. But- a lot this year, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I need to think back to my, my stand-up days. You just come up with an idea and then you try it at a new material night. Yeah. Keep the lines that work, throw out the lines that don't. Yeah. Then you do it again. And then a, a, two, a joke, that a bit that gets two laughs, you gradually grow it to get five laughs and then yeah. 10 laughs and then 12 laughs in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you go on stage, you have that confidence to say, okay, this bit, I'm going to get 12 laughs in the next you know, minute. So even if you don't laugh at half the stuff, it's yeah. still it's still a decent amount of laughs. I'll still do well. So I think the trust comes from this bit works, this bit is tight mm. and I can trust it. I'll just say the words and perform it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't get too nervous because, you know, if, if they don't laugh at anything I say, then yeah. there's, there's really nothing I can do because all the material is like, it's my vibe, you know? Mm. So that's, that's, yeah, that's why I trust the material. My writing process is, is mostly that trial and error. I think there are some people with a lot of natural talent in stand-up, and I don't think I'm one of those. I'm more like just uh, empirical data. Just <laughs> it's okay. This guy's bottom is all on the microphone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. So a lot of people have natural talent when it comes to stand-up, right? So they just go on stage and try out new stuff, and the first night they try it, it kills... Mm. Uh, yeah, that's not me. The first night I try a new bit, it's like maybe I get one or two laughs from it. And then gradually it builds and I hone it and it gets stronger and stronger with time. Because mm, your stuff is very, I think you're definitely one of the comics like mm. that are watching your stuff is very layered. It's got like a punchline, but then another bit and then another bit. Yeah. That's why I kind of had to ask. It's like the first question. I was like, right, like, 
how do you write? Because your your stuff is very layered, and you kind of like you do this really good observational thing of how you see British culture as well from mm-hmm. someone who's Malaysian as yeah, well. Yeah, Malaysia. Yeah, which yeah. is good though. Like Thanks. It's, it's really fun. Like you, there's a bit of material where you talk about the sushi. Yes, Tesco, and it was so <laughs> weird because. I would just buy the sushi, yeah? And it was until you said that joke where you talk about that little fish with the soy sauce. (laughs) And I was like, Rob, this isn't... This ain't real sushi. Yeah. Like. It's not, and it's crazy that people don't know it's not real sushi. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You, like, sushi is a big craft in Japan. And yeah. then my, my the joke is along those lines, right? It's a big craft. People devote their whole lives to it. And then they come to the UK, you can also get sushi at Boots. Yeah. And they're like, okay, condoms, loop, oh, my life's work. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's kind of the vibe. And, and <laughs> it's these little things that I think most of my humor comes from the cultural differences really and it's hard not to because you, you come from a very different place i come from a very different place so the things i noticed would be like why are people here so so messed up yeah you know so what was your route into comedy because everyone's always uh, got conventional roots like what was your route into getting into stand-up comedy uh i just started doing it i was in a i was in university hmm. and i was in a black uh black sketch group yeah. You know, uh, and they always, I was in it because I think they always wanted different race people because then they can do all different sketches. You <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. They need someone to play the Kung Fu master, you know? <laughs> so I was in that group. We did a, a big show every year. And then after the show, it's, um, it's like February. And then between February and June, there was nothing going on. So I was like, oh, I want to keep doing comedy. So that's, let, let me try stand up. Mm. So that's when I started in 2011 in the u.s okay yeah so i think when you saw me at king gong that was what 2016 2015 ish yeah yeah around that time so yes. that's like i've been going five years so yeah i'm not that new but you know not not that much of a veteran either yeah uh so yeah that's how i started and was you studying in the u.s yeah what was you studying engineering and philosophy oh wow you have to man as an a- asian asian person with asian parents they, they're <laughs> not gonna let you go to the u.s to study like art history <laughs> yeah you know yeah, what i mean yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, not at that level yet. <laughs> yeah. That's like 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 white people level, <laughs> like freedom. We we don't have that yet. Everything yeah, needs to be yeah. somewhat practical. Uh, but it was still it was still cool, you know. Yeah. I still quite like the subject. Okay, I like comedy more, obviously. But and what is it that made you go to the US? I got a scholarship. Oh, you know? sick. I wouldn't have had the chance to do it otherwise because my parents uh they're, they're not rich. Yeah. I, I wasn't starving either. I got by. We got by. You <laughs> yeah. know, especially because of the third world country. Students, <laughs> like. Dude, yeah. they, they're, they're flossing, man. <laughs> Burberry coats and that. The thing is, those are the people you see, the flashy ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the poor ones, we don't have money to go out, so you never see us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're working. <laughs> Montclair jackets. Because <laughs> yeah. that. that's, that's like, but that's kind of like a sick stereotype. The fact where it's just like, well, the, the, the international students, you know, that come from Asia, like, or like they they're always kind of rich, but it's like you're saying it's like, yeah. like that's become a thing now. Of it's like, well, yeah, like, of course you must have a Burberry jacket. Yeah, yeah no, I wish, I <laughs> wish. Like, of course, like, they, would, they would go to class in a Burberry jacket, <laughs> and then all the other Americans are like in sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they just don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. it's so weird. <laughs> so what was it like in terms of what was American like university like for you out there? Like, they call it they call it college. So what was it like for you out there? Was it big cultural difference was it something you always wanted to do yeah well i always wanted to study abroad and most malaysians uh, i think uh, it's always considered like cool to go abroad and you have better career prospects too if you studied abroad and i went back to malaysia Mm. uh and oh yeah it's so different man coming from a asian country to like the most western place you know america yeah the 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 amount of um like like freedom and 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 People, everybody in America thinks their opinions are important. Yeah. In Asia, we are not encouraged to have our own opinions. And that's both good and bad, you know? Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. during the pandemic, it's easier to get people to wear a face mask mm-hmm. because we, we, we obey orders more easily, right? Yes. When they go to America, everybody thinks their opinion's good, which is good for critical thinking. But then when you want people to do something, yeah. you know, it, it's hard. They, they start having protests for face yeah. masks. Just, just wear it, man. Just, just, just wear it. <laughs> yeah. And I... I it's Asia leans more authoritarian compared to America and the UK. Right. So now you're seeing, we are seeing the benefits of it because most Asian countries, COVID's done. You know, I have a friend in Taiwan. She sent me a Insta story, a video 
of them, all of them at a rave, 25,000 people. Nobody's wow. wearing a face mask, like last week. <laughs> so yeah. an authoritarian regime has its, it's, it's useful in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. We need more, a bit more Kim Jong-un <laughs> during COVID, yeah. you know? <laughs> did you ever um, do stand up out there in the States? Yeah, yeah. That's why I started. Yeah. How did you find that? Uh, good, good. States and UK are, I would say, pretty similar. I struggle more when I do gigs in Asia because I haven't performed there as much. Mm. And the sense of humor, that's like, there, there are certain things that will work in both countries. Mm. C- certain things just don't work in Malaysia. Uh, so I'm still figuring that out. Like, oh, I've only done like maybe like five, ten shows in Asia total. So I'm still figuring it out. But the US... The US is nice and compared to the UK is quite similar. You just just don't do like the American references and you should be okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I yeah. found. Yeah. Cuz I found when I was in the States. I've only gigged there twice in the States. Where? New York? In LA. LA nice. And LA is quite interesting because like LA doesn't really have like an art scene as such. You know like in the UK where it's like we're going to go to the theater on Friday. Like yeah. it's like a thing. You, 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 do you think that's good for comedy? The art scene? No, I don't. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> yes. So for me as a comic, uh, it's like like when I when I tried to get a gig out. Well, I got a gig through a uh, bigger Ashleen B. She she sorted out. She sorted me out of a gig, and um, I think that's the thing because they don't really have an art scene. You know, there's a lot of like um, a lot of like improv comedy shows, mm-hmm. a lot of stand up shows, like one after the other. A little bit like Edinburgh, a little bit. I kind of found when I went to this show because as soon as the show was finished, there was someone in straight away. Um, I just find it like. I don't know, like, for me as a comic from the UK performing in, in the States, like, I felt like I was cheating a little bit because already, like, coming out, it was like, whoa, this guy's, he's not from here, man. He's going to be good. Oh. It had that kind of vibe well, to it. I wish <laughs> yeah. I had that vibe in the UK. <laughs> I wish you oh, he's not from here. He's going to be good. Oh, man, sometimes it's... That, I thought you would have that about you, man. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think it's more like, a gentle skepticism. Yeah. You know, when they see me, it's like, oh. Because I, I've had audience members come up to me after a show. I said, like, oh, when I saw you come up, I was like, oh, this guy's not going to be good. And really? I was genuinely surprised. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think the like British people, or people who sound British in the US, commands more respect yeah. than people who sound Asian yeah. in the UK, you know? Oh, wow, that's so Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's not a big deal. It's yeah. more like just this gentle. It's because they're not used to seeing an Asian person being funny. I think that that's the root of it. Okay. It's not a it's not a racism thing, and I don't want this to become like that kind of conversation. But it's more like mm. when you watch people on comics on TV, you know, you, you have Kevin Hart, you know, a black guy who's really funny. So people have that image in their head. Mm. So or uh, you know, a, a white person usually, right, who's really funny, and then you come up, uh, and it's it's not something that super foreign to them. They like British people, and mm. they've seen like uh, black comedians before, most mm. of them. So they're yeah. like, okay, this this is gonna okay. be fun. Okay, but what are well, the chances of them? Dude, he's black and he's British. Dude, I love The Office, man. I freaking love The Office, man. <laughs> and I love Kevin Hart. <laughs> oh man, it's it's quite yeah. It's so interesting you say that because definitely as a black comic in the UK, yeah. there was there definitely was that kind of perception where I get on stage and like this guy's gonna be great. He's really gonna be funny. <laughs> black people always funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I got a friend at work, Michael. Oh man, black guy, so funny. So um, yeah, it's quite interesting you say that because yeah. as, as you've just said that, I'm like, oh okay. But I've always thought, as a comic, anyway, whenever there's a comic um, performing on stage that's not from here, I always, as for me as an audience member, I'm like, it's still going to be sick. If you're not really? from here mm-hmm. and you're going to perform to a UK audience, then you must be good. That's always been my perception. Do you know what I mean? Of comedy. Mm. Um, because it's like, well, mm. yeah, if you're brave enough to perform to an audience that isn't your own, you're out your comfort zone. So I've always had a perception where I'm like, I bet this dude's, I bet this guy's going to be sick. Um, and they always are. They always are. Because it's people that have gigged in different environments, in different places. Um, so, yeah. In terms of you, okay, as a comic, what do you prefer in terms of like, like British crowds or American crowds? Because... I feel like with a, an American crowd, like I was, when I was in LA, it was very much like, as I said, like I felt cool. I can kind of talk about not anything, but it's just like you're saying, it's like, oh my God, like that's a black British guy. Uh-huh. So already, because it's like, it's, it's quite exotic. Wow. We don't, we just normally have Americans and we got some from the UK. Um, but it was weird because some of the things they were laughing at, mm-hmm. I hadn't really got to the punchline. I'm getting really good laughs. 
And I'm like, mm, I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because you guys are really laughing and joke hasn't happened yet. Whereas in the UK, I guess maybe because I'm from here, I have to work a little bit to kind of get the laugh. I, I think it's more Americans are just uh, slightly more outgoing than the average British person. Yeah. Man, to get a British person to even express any emotion. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a, it's a stereotype, right? The British people are more uptight and, you know, yeah. quite stiff upper lipped. And I find in, in America, people are, are, are louder, right? Mm. So in general, so their laughs exactly. are louder. Yeah, they are yeah. more talkative. They're more outgoing. Yeah. I find that, again, this comparison, when I, when I gigged in America, it was like, 2015, 2014, that was my, those are my last few, last few days there, last few gigs there. So the comparison might not be that accurate because I'm a, a much better comic now than I was then. Yeah. But even then, I, I feel like American crowds had just had um, a bit more energy to them. So yeah. when a laugh hits, it, it feels better. They, they laugh harder. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've done those small town gigs, right? Opening 20 at Guildford. <laughs> And they just caught, got off work and they just, just had their curry. They're there for the curry when they're there. The comedy is free with the curry. That's why they're there, you know? So they just go and then you're like, oh. Yeah. yeah. No. I remember when I first started doing them. Um, did you ever do any of the Junglers gigs? No, I came here after about... they were kind of yeah, on the, on the I remember swing, yeah. just doing a couple of the Junglers gigs. And because like Junglers were like, like the the chain of comedy. Yeah. Clubs. I get the vibe though. I know the yeah, vibe. Yeah, so you're already yeah. I was like, I really want to do a gig because people yeah. are saying to me, look, you know, you can do a weekend at Junglers. You do your Friday, Saturday, and then they might get you back for another show. So I was like, wow, like you just get paid. So every part of me, like as a comic, you know, hearing about, you know, you hear about these clubs and stuff. I was like, I really want to start doing some Junglers gigs. I started doing them when it wasn't really at its height. Mm -hmm. So I remember once going to. Um, where was it? I think it was Southampton. I traveled all the way to Southampton uh -huh. and I got there and it was in like a Oceanas, like a, it was like a, it was like a big club basically. <sighs> yeah. You know, like a really student-y kind of club night. I remember mm -hmm. getting there, they had a comedy night on and I remember just performing <sighs> yeah. and there's just like a waiter walking around like, oh, excuse me, number 14 at your pizza? And I'm telling <laughs> jokes and there was a split second where I was like, I really want to go home. This yeah. is not. This is. Oh, can a fire alarm just go off right now? Because I felt like I was prostituting myself, like for laughs, like, 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 like I'm just earning this money just to make people laugh. I felt so degraded, bruv, because no one was listening. People just eating pizza. People glance at us like, oh man. And it's like, there's, there's not like. I think the beautiful thing is when you do stand up, right? Some of my favorite things about doing stand-up is sometimes before you go on and just like chilling out with some comics before the show, sometimes after the show, or just like sitting back and watching other comics. I think that's my, my favorite process of being a stand-up comic at times. Obviously it's great when you get off, off stage, but you know, there's times where, you know, as a comic you say, oh, cool, I'm going to try some new stuff and it really works. And it might just be that one joke at your 10 minute set and you're like, oh, I, really, I was really happy with that. You know, and you might get another comic who's like, oh, dude, that was great. Or sometimes yeah. another comic who, you know, it was good, but they don't want to say. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. like, <laughs> like, especially if someone's gone up before you and they've died. And it's like, how, how are they, man? Yeah, they're, they're tough tonight, man. Yeah. You're like, cool. And then you smash. And it's like, yeah, I'm just going to head off yeah. to another gig, man. Yeah. <laughs> How was your um, introduction into doing stand-up comedy, like in the UK? Like, just you, just you just you start off the say I started off the same way as everybody started, right? You, yeah. you just do the open mics, okay, above a pub somewhere, yeah, and then you gradually start. Then you start doing a few of the competitions. Yes, King Gong is one of them. Yeah, for the listeners who don't know, King Gong is this uh, show where. You have you have to, you have to survive for five minutes, and at any time, an audience can just uh, there are three audience members with red cards, right? And then if they don't like your jokes, they lift up their red card, and then when all three red cards go out, you're gonged off the stage. Yeah. So that's the gong show, and yeah, that that was a fun night, wasn't it? That, that was, was a that good was crowd. A fun night for so many reasons for me because I'd been trying to get on to do a gong uh -huh. show for years. Like I was just oh, I really want to do this gong show because it was the fact that you could perform at the comedy store, mm -hmm. which was like, wow, there's an audience there. I could get more gigs maybe in the future. And so I think you had to, uh, how, can I, how I can remember it. I remember just had to email them at a certain time at the end of the month. Yeah. Yep. So I'd email and it was like, yeah, cool. Like you can, you can perform at this date. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I'm talking like the waiting list was like four months yeah. to do the King Gong. Yeah. So a four month waiting list goes past. I'm like, cool, this is going to the King Gong. I go downstairs and then forget before going in there, like there's a bounce at the door. He was just like so unwelcoming. Cause for me, like, you know, it's like a part of a film, you're like, if this goes great, phew, Hollywood, watch out. Yeah. <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> <laughs> and um, the bouncer was just like a dickhead. I just remember getting there. I was like, oh, you're right. I'm here to do the show. What show? I'm like, well, you do comedy, man. Like, what other show am I going to do? I thought I'd be like, a burlesque. Yeah. Burlesque. Yeah. Let me, <laughs> let me get my nip down. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I remember going downstairs and then you have to sign up and then you find out when you're going to be on. So I was like, you're going to be on the second half. Like, cool. And I'd never seen the, the, the gong show. I kind of knew that you kind of get gonged off. I didn't know how ruthless it was. I remember mm. sitting there and I'll never forget I was sitting there and I'm watching this one guy was dressed up. Do you remember the guy that was dressed up? I think he might have done a Trump <sighs> impression or something. I've done, I did the gong show three times, so I don't remember now. Oh, yeah. The, the, so was that your details. first time you had done yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see, I see. And there, there, there's an element of luck, man, because I did it three times and I got all three outcomes. Yeah. I, I, I was gonged off one yeah. time. The other time I, I got through, but I didn't win. And the yeah. third time I won, uh, okay. we won, Yeah. right? So it's it's a little <laughs> bit of a crapshoot. And, and another thing is the audience, they're encouraged to boo people, Yes. right? Which, which yeah, I yeah, love yeah. because like, even as a comic and I'm like, yeah, some comics deserve to be booed off. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? You have been to the average <laughs> Edinburgh show where it's like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, your, your parents loved you too much. <laughs> And they never told you what you did was stupid. They thought every painting you made, it, it went on the fridge, you know? It's too much. Again, it's, an, it's the Asian perspective. Like, our parents were harsh. If something shit, they'll tell you. And my, my parents still, like, even when Uncle Roger blew up, it's just like, yeah, yeah, my dad my dad now thinks he's the inspiration for everything now. Like, oh, yeah, you see, Uncle Roger, I think that, that's all model off of me, you know? See my belt phone case? I have a belt phone case. That's, he has a belt phone case. So yeah, yeah. where do you think you got that from? So we are, we are very hard to impress people. You know, we are people who are very hard to impress. And yeah, yeah. I find that, oh, there needs to be a little bit of that. You know, yeah, It's yeah. nice to say that. Well, the thing is you also, because of your background on social media, you also kind of, you kind of skip the fringe too, right? You, yes. you didn't yeah, do it yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, oh man, that, that is, you, you, you did well. You did well. <laughs> <laughs> that is, by the way, the best part of being a YouTuber, which I don't have to do the Edinburgh Fringe ever again. <laughs> yeah. And nobody tells me to do it. And, you know, the, the thing is, the Edinburgh Fringe is also, uh, as, as a comic in the UK, the Edinburgh Fringe is this place where everybody goes up every August to kind of, it's like a trade show, right? You do your show and the whole producers come see you, agents come and see you. It's like, com it's like, it's like What's it called? Like mm -hmm. a like it's almost like a Comic Con for a month. Yeah, for comedians. Yeah, the best way to describe it. Anyone that doesn't know. But yeah. but the thing is, it's also a very very small market. You know what I mean? Most people. I'm from Malaysia, right? Most most of my friends in Ma Malaysia, they don't even know Edinburgh exists as a city, <laughs> let alone a comedy festival. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when I say the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, that's that's three new concepts I have to explain to them. <laughs> yeah. What Edinburgh is, what the fringe is. Nobody, what fringe? <laughs> yeah. Imagine telling, going to Asia, go to Hong Kong. I am doing the fringe. I'm like, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> so, and that's when I realized like this path, this classical, this classic British comic path wasn't for me. I need to forge my own thing. And that's yeah, how yeah. the DIY stuff came about, you know? Yeah. That you mentioned up top. Yeah. So you took a show to, did you, did you take a show to Edinburgh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that being said, <laughs> I still did it. <laughs> what was your experience? Because I think for me, going to Edinburgh, it's like, it's kind of like you have this perception that the, the streets are paved with gold in a sense that you can do a show up there and before you know it, you'll be on TV and you'll have a tour and you'll have a book and a DVD. And that's kind of, it's almost like that was the only route that I was ever told. For comedy. You know when like comedy becomes a business? Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, so this is the business side. This is what we must do. They're climbing the ladder, the corporate ladder, but yeah. the comedy version. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And didn't we all do comedy because we didn't want to climb that ladder, yeah. you know? But then we, we jump into this and everybody wants to go the same path. It's, mm. it's comfortable, I guess. Mm. But it doesn't really work anymore. I don't know if you know this, but it doesn't really work anymore. Like... Mm. Mo a lot of things on TV now, they don't even make a dent in terms of your uh, of the following you gain, you know? Yeah, it's course. it's hard. Like you, you doing a short little clip, you know, asking Julie to get a couple of cans. That works better than some of yes, the time at the Apollo, you know? 
I think for me, like mm. when I when I started doing the videos, mm -hmm. and because that whole year was so was so crazy, because I was meant to go Edinburgh that year, I'd done that video, and I couldn't afford it, mm -hmm. and that was due to like the promoter being like, yeah, I need like, I need I need four grand at the end of the month. I was like, what? <laughs> you are you Albanian gangster, bro? What do you mean? <laughs> what? I'm here to do comedy, but so already I was like. I can't. I was like, I can't get that now, but maybe six weeks. Yeah. Because I'm in my head like, if nah. I if I need to hustle in a way where I'm like, cool, I really want to raise funds for this. How can I do it? Yeah. You know, I used to have a good training. I'm thinking I might sell trainers, do more shifts of work. I might try and borrow some here. Mm -hmm. um, maybe get a credit card. Out. These are all the things I was thinking how I could accumulate this amount of money. This is only half of it. This ain't even the full Oof. amount. Fair. So. Already, I was like, cool. So I said that I can't, I can get it. I remember saying that I can get it in six weeks. No, nope, has to be a month. So in the end, I was like, well, I'm not going to go then. I can't get that money. And I'm not going to, like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Like, you're cracking on the street. You're yeah. what's getting on, blood. Hey, yeah. I want to hear a job, blood. <laughs> yeah. Need money for the fringe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like, it's not that deep, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's never that deep for some jokes. I'm like, well, okay, well, I can't go then, is it? Yeah. Um, so for me, I was quite fortunate. I skipped that, started doing the videos, and it was the videos that allowed me to talk. Because normally it's having a great Edinburgh show. So um, how was it for you when you took your show up there? Uh, fine. It, it was a funny show. And that's another thing. Funny shows don't really get a lot of great press because yeah. they want an artsy narrative the artsy show because the fringe is ultimately still an arts festival so mm -hmm. a f show that's just funny sure it'll, it'll, it'll sell decent ticket sales but your reviews will be very middling you know three and a four stars a whole yeah listeners back home that's a whole review culture there every show gets reviewed and yeah it's, it's not it's not a good place to yeah. be for your mental health i and think you have to also point out that it's being reviewed by people who are, who are not really yeah, they're, they're, even... they're university students. When <laughs> yeah. else do you take advice <laughs> like... from a uni student? You have roommates. <laughs> I don't listen to people with roommates. You <laughs> fucked up in your life. Who Name one successful person with roommates. <laughs> and you're reviewing my show, really. <laughs> I think under every re re reviewer's byline, you, you got to specify how many roommates you live with. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we can adjust our... <laughs> expectations how much do i really want to put weight in this review <laughs> yeah. how many roommates four hmm <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you live with one per what kind of house are you living in yeah what kind of house is it yeah. <laughs> is there an ensuite bathroom yes. <laughs> i'll trust a review if someone has got an ensuite bathroom yeah. and somebody doesn't because <laughs> that's someone that's just like got a share of what a review from someone that shares a bathroom not a yeah. chance bro <laughs> <laughs> that I mean that is a good way to go through life, with six, isn't it? With six people in the house, <laughs> you're already pissed off, bro. All right, bunk bed. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? And someone just drunk your milk? Yeah. Now you got to review my show, and I will pay eight grand. Yeah. Not a chance, Philippa. Not a chance, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that oh, is, rule of thumb, man. <laughs> if you don't it's listen true, to though. people in roommates, it's true. They're not, in, they're not even in the comedy industry. They've got single yeah. beds. <laughs> like single beds other people's pubic hair and the toilet they, plug they've got, they, you know? they, they've got two plugs one is for the lamp one is for the iphone sometimes you've got to take one out yeah. and sometimes put one for the laptop because they ain't got a double plug you're already pissed off by the time you get to my show innit? it yeah i'm just trying to cheer you up yeah so my show just has to make you feel good yeah before the reviews come do you know what great show i'm in a great mood now great mood now someone did yeah. shit in the communal yeah um <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a communal bathroom, didn't flush it, but that show made me feel good. Yeah, four yeah. stars. Yeah. Four stars. Like, the priorities are so fucked up. Instead of, like, <laughs> going to a show with your notepad, why not get a part time job so you can move out? You know? Trust me, it won't even be a good notepad, you know? It won't even be like, you know, like you can get the ones with the leather back. Yeah. It'll the moleskins. You know the ones that you fold like that? Yeah. The one that's the one that Spider Man has when he's a reporter. Hey, man, need a story. It's one of them ones. <laughs> but as I said, if there's any reviews out there want to give me good reviews, no. more than welcome. You're more than welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but don't you feel like, you know, a lot of people get affected by negative reviews, right? But because we yes. both do online stuff, mm. we are prepared for them. Like, do you know how brutal YouTube comments can, can ooh, be? <laughs> yeah. Blood of fire. 
Have you been on YouTube yet? Where you go into the settings and you be, have you been into the spam comments? Oh my god! What? Bam! I didn't know about this, you know. <laughs> Bam! Is it a bunch of people calling you the N word? Bam! <laughs> that was mad. I remember I was like, spam comments. Oh, yeah. this will just be some any, bruv. That is like, that's like, the, that's like, that's like, that's like, that's like the deep web of YouTube. <laughs> There's a dark web. That's <laughs> right next to the child porn section. That's <laughs> the YouTube spam comments. <laughs> Bro, I couldn't believe it. I was like, because sometimes I put a video up and be like, wow, some really positive comments out there. <laughs> People are so friendly. Thanks, guys. And until I was seen that, and it was like, you fucking black nigga. <laughs> I said, what? I said, bro, the, I would do a video and I was like, how can you be racist about this? Yeah, you're talking about college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how racist are you, bro? <laughs> that you found this and you just, like, that is like terrorist racism, you know? Yeah. Just going around, nigga! <laughs> what? Hold on, wait a second. Bro, I'm cooking pasta, bro. What? Yeah. <laughs> how can you be racist about me cooking pasta, bro? Oh my gosh. I thought it was just yeah. me, you know? No, it's everybody. You, YouTube oh knows. Gosh. That's why they leave that checkbox hole in a uh, flag inappropriate comments checked <laughs> yeah. by default. That's, that's where our mental oh health is. The number of go back to China comments I get. <laughs> oh, man. You know what's funny, though, is the fact that sometimes you get a comment, yeah, which is like, it'd be like someone's like, go back home. But then, like, there's times where I've, I've seen it and they've edited it. And it's still in spam. <laughs> Do you know how funny that is? They got a of... typo. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <sighs> big man, you don't need to put a full stop on it, yeah. you know? I got it the first time. It doesn't have to have more impact because you put yeah. a full... Because I'm like, what, what, what did they edit? Yeah. Oh, they put a full stop. <laughs> okay, it's serious now. They left it. Go back home. Oh, bloody hell. I'll tell you what. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> edit. Full stop. Oh, that all... It will, that, will, that will really affect him. Yeah. <laughs> you wait till I put an apostrophe on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna write this in capital letters. <laughs> oh. How do you find like <laughs> how do you find like the on the online success that you're having now? Like how are you because obviously now I think the beautiful thing is when mm -hmm. you know you can kind of get into that online space, it helps your creativity. But is there ways that you wanna you know, does it change the way that you bring out content or you want to do for stand up and stuff? Uh, it just makes me want to put out more, um, more content. You know, I, mm. I'm up to like one video a week now, which I mean, to a proper YouTuber, that's nothing. But yeah, to yeah. me, it's like, oh, I'm really struggling under that <laughs> yeah. weight. Uh, and, and you know, that uh, that's, I'm just so grateful for everything, you know, now I, I because of, for YouTube and any sort of social media content, you control everything in the creative process, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, everything is completely on your terms. And the fact that when I put things out, there are people who watch it, you know, what more can you ask? That's what we want in life, right? Yeah, to do yeah, a show, yeah. people come. It's, just, it's the same thing. You just want to sell tickets. You just want eyeballs on your, in your craft. And yeah. yeah, what more can I ask for? It's, and, it's amazing. And how many subscribers have you got at the moment currently right now? Uh, on YouTube alone, it's two and a half million. Woo! <laughs> Big numbers, boy. Thank you. So you got two blacks, <laughs> gold ones. Uh, no, it was one. Oh. They don't give you two. They don't give you a plaque every million. I thought, I thought every million you get a black still. <laughs> <laughs> they give you one, one plaque, one plaque, and yeah. then the next plaque is at ten mil. Oh, really? It's a diamond button. So you get a plaque for what is it? Hundred k. Hundred k. Silver one. Yeah. Right, and then a gold one for one mil. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Cause in my head I'm like, oh, 500k plaque, boy. Then seven, 750k seven <laughs> plaque. <laughs> then 1.25 million plaque. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I see. Cause sometimes I watch like, and I'm like, I look in the background of sometimes YouTubers. I'm like, how come there's no more plaques? Yeah. There's only two. <laughs> there's only two plaques. Um. But you can always order more. Once you unlock the gold plaque, you can order uh, extra gold plaques if you want. Really? Yeah, for Bro. your for your team. So Swear. you can yeah, oh, you can so get a hundred of that aligned. I will order some for you if you want. I don't care. Hey, I'll, 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 have I'll just put it in the back. You ain't got a million, yeah. but it's a plaque in it. Yeah. <laughs> the only plaque you got is in your teeth, bro. Leave me, man. Let me just enjoy my plaque. <laughs> 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 oh, that's so sick. I didn't know that, man. I think what I really enjoyed, like, especially like when I put up like videos on YouTube. Do you ever, because obviously 
Talk me through the process of when you done that video, like the Uncle Roger video, because you've been doing mm. the videos before then. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I was ha I started doing YouTube like March last year. Mm. Not consistent, wow. like one one video every two to four weeks, that kind of thing. March last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've hit two point two million. Two point five. Two point five. Yes. <laughs> Whoa! I got I got insanely lucky, and it's like not something I can replicate. Nah, so congratulations. Thank bro. you. That is I, sick man. Yeah. That is like. Pro that is really sick, bro. Thank you, there man. There must be some, uh, they need like a YouTube leaderboard or something to how many subscribers per when you started. Oh. Because that would be dope still. Like yeah. a league. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that would be nice. But, you know, I don't want to get too caught get up in the gassed, numbers, man. man. What? You got gassed that up, man. <laughs> Listen, do you know how much I talk about my BAFTA for no reason? <laughs> Post was like, you're all yeah. right, got mail. Fantastic. Yeah, I was just cleaning in my BAFTA. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity bro <laughs> again these people know, that, that's, that's the thing nobody outside the uk knows <laughs> yeah <laughs> tell me malaysia now, fans a, a few people in, in america rate me a little bit you gotta rate me a little bit yeah the americans yeah. get it but there's some swedish guy i don't know who is Bafta. Yeah. <laughs> i don't know who that guy is yeah. i'm like don't worry Swedish. Still, good job though you Trust guys you gotta guess that up yeah we'll find out but um no nah, man you gotta be you, bro, that's a sick accomplishment bro. thanks man thanks, much thanks. last year yeah and Sick, bro. well, again, my, my goal for YouTube this year was yeah. to clear 10,000 subs. Wow. <laughs> so I overshot it a little bit, I think. So do you know how many subs you got for like the Uncle Roger video? The initial Uncle Roger video with the BBC food egg fried rice one yes. that Hersha was in. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't know, man. I went from like 8K. Yeah. I posted that video. And then it got some trash. Like, oh, 20,000 views. Nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, I don't know, for some reason, it gone, it gone viral on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, every single platform. Wow. It, it, you posted it there. that video was pshoo. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere. And it just went, people are sharing it in their WhatsApp groups. People's moms were sharing it in their WhatsApp groups. Yeah. People's babies are doing impressions of me. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I, I was interviewed for... Every single newspaper outlet in Asia, you know, wow. Seoul Broadcasting Service had a whole 10 minute segment of, oh, do British people not know how to make rice? And then they played my clip and then they had they interviewed like chefs in Korea yeah. saying that, have you seen this before? They're like, no, no, I haven't seen this before. You know, Sick. I was in Variety, yeah. in that big Hollywood magazine. And yeah, it wow. just went super crazy, man. Um, very, very grateful for it, of, of course. And I, I, I don't know, I think it just touches onto something that's super relatable, mm. ma like making rice. And and also like, in a fun way, talk us about cultural appropriation, which is quite, you know, the, the, the topic of the month, you know, the, the trendy topic right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think all those stuff, plus the, the characters, uh, the character is really funny mm. and the character is uh, also very relatable, especially if you grew up in Asia, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. will have an uncle who behaves like that. <laughs> You know, the yeah, sassy, yeah, yeah. condescending uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah. all those reasons. Oh, and, and because I started doing YouTube since last year, I knew how to edit. I knew how to make the sound sound good. I know how to what light to use, what camera lens to use. Mm, mm. I know how to do a jump cuts, zoom on my face, funny effects to keep people's interest. Yeah, so I think yeah, all yeah. those things came together. And my stand-up chops, I could like make things funny. All those things came together and, yes. you know. So yeah, th yes, there is a bit of skill, but there's also tons of luck involved. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You strike while the iron's hot, man. And I think that's yeah. the the really cool thing with what like online has allowed people to do now is how you can go viral and then say, "Cool, like, I'm gonna keep doing more of this and put it on YouTube and just keep growing and growing and growing." Yeah, and growing. exactly. As opposed yeah. to yeah, I got a new stand up special on BBC Radio Four, and then I tell my <laughs> mom back home, so, "Okay, how can I watch it?" And I send them the link. Okay, what what is iPlayer? Oh, I need a TV license. <laughs> How do I how do I watch this? I need a VPN. If you tell your mom you need a VPN to watch your content, they're like, "Fuck you!" I'm not gonna learn. What to, I'm not gonna do homework to watch my son's creation. Oh man, VPNs! You know the hard thing about VPNs, yeah? There's times where I've been abroad and I'm like, "Oh, I was in Australia and mm -hmm. um, I done live video Apollo and I wanted to watch it while everyone was watching it, so I'm trying to get VPNs." Oh my gosh, bro! I'm like signing up to this and then I'm like, cool, I've only got 30, I've got to pay for it. And then there's a fake VPN, it's not a VPN. Then it's sending me to some mad Russian website. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. That VPN thing is a lot more technical than what, cause sometimes you just think, cause you know now we live in a world of like apps, you download it, you press it and it's done. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on a sec. Why is it saying man's in America? I'm not in America, bro. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, it's on the American settings. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's too so much. Funny, and yeah, man. even when, yeah, but even when Life at the Apollo put it on YouTube, well, okay, yeah. on YouTube, I guess it's, it's globally accessible, but when it's on, say, BBC, like, what, why don't you want more eyeballs on it? I guess it's just like bureaucracy and just red tape and legal issues that they can't expose it to more people. Mm. But it's just very limiting, right? The UK mm. is a tiny country. Yeah, in comparison yeah. to well, my, my target demo is like mainly Asian people, so I, I need to look outside the UK. Yeah, that's yeah, where yeah. most Asians are, you know, not mm. here. So. <laughs> yeah, too cold, man. Yeah. Too so cold I'm right now, guys. Fifty of us. <laughs> <laughs> so when you done Uncle Roger, were there people that thought that that was a real person? And yeah, was his character. Yeah, so that's a thing I have to be really careful about because. Most YouTubers will do a character like, you know, PewDiePie is somewhat a character. And then there's a base comedian YouTuber with 8 million. His name is Davey504. Very, very funny. But he also plays a little bit of a character. But because I'm a stand-up, I want to sell tickets under my own name, right? Mm. So I need to let people know that I'm not just the character, you mm. know? So there are little things I do, like keeping the channel name Mr. Nigel Ung instead of changing the channel name to Uncle Roger, you know, and then okay. I break characters sometimes and the bloopers, I become myself again, just to yes. little sprinkles of things to tell people that I'm still a person and Uncle yeah. Roger's my creation. But people still think like, oh my God, who is this guy? This, you know, <laughs> why does he speak like that? I, uh, uh, my illusions are shattered because I realized Uncle Roger isn't real. It's like, it's in the YouTube description. <laughs> Uncle Roger's a creation of Malaysian comedian Nigel Ung. You know? like, oh my, it's shattered. They watch my old YouTube videos. Oh, you, you shat. I, I'm so sad now. I'm depressed. Uncle Roger's not real. <laughs> I find it so funny because I remember when I started doing the couple of cans thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everyone knew it was a character. But for me, like, I tried to be like a proper purist at times where, like, people say, so who does the voices? I'm like, I can't tell you because that's only in the world of my character. <laughs> Join me next week for more. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and it's only until, like, maybe two years ago, I was like, it's not that deep. I do the, I do the voices in it. Like, yeah. it's really not that deep. Yeah. I did find that when I, when I first done the tour, mm -hmm. because... Initially, you know, I was gaining an audience through the tractions of those videos. Mm -hmm. So I was I was gaining an audience through that. And, <clears throat> you know, the, we called the tour the Couple of Cans tour because that was the most eye-catching thing for someone who's like, oh, what is it? That's oh, a catchphrase, yeah. Oh, cool. So we just thought, just make it what, what I'm saying is a catchphrase. Mm -hmm. But then it was really interesting because it's like you're saying, like, you're a comic first. And you're like, I want you to come to my tour shows, but I'm going to do stand-up comedy. And it's so hard because I had people was like, I bought tickets, but I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do a couple of cans for an hour. Yeah. And I was like, that's going to be a long, boring show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. for the whole show. <laughs> and it was really interesting when we done, mm. um, we done a tour show and we was in Leicester, one of the shows. And I'd come out as the character because I was like, they want to see the character somehow in it. So I'd come out as the character. Mm -hmm. I'd have cans with me. Like I've just come from the shop give out cans. Who wants a can? Everyone goes, hey, what's happening? What's your name? Sally. What's happening, Sally? She's a slag. Like, I <laughs> like that's a, and when I look back, I was like, it's a bit rude, you know, but people was like, yeah, I am. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, I remember when we done the tour show and there was this director that came because we was trying to do like, we was doing this shorts thing with like Channel 4 and he came to like watch the show and I remember him saying to me, he goes, oh, I came to the show and um, I was talking to this woman and she was, she said to me, oh man, yeah, it's a great show, man. Like some really good acts. And the guy was like, oh, but it's just Mo. And, and then she's like, no, no, but there was the guy before. And then it was Mo. And he's like, and he was like, what? Like, you know, that's the same person. <laughs> he just has a hat on, <laughs> like yeah. a jacket. Yeah. So I think for me, it was yeah. very much like transitioning from what I had done with the characters to mm. be like, Check out my stand up. That's kind of where I want you lot to go. Cause yeah. I always feel like it has more more length as as a more longevity. Do you feel that you could be in danger of that now? Where you know like you're saying that like, people say, Oh my god, the illusion's shattered. And you know, you mm -hmm. take them on that side of like, come and check out the stand up, because that's what I've been doing for years. Mm -hmm. Um, or are you in that place where you're just like, This is the character, I'm gonna really push more with the character. How are you how are you finding your way of transitioning into both? Um well, I, 
honestly, I, I don't know yet because I haven't been on a tour. This all all this blew up in the pandemic, right? So okay. I haven't been on a tour yet. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe for the first tour that I go on, maybe I'll have, you know, do what you did. Maybe have Uncle Roger be my opening act. People yeah. want to see him, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%, man. And I, I know I'll sell more tickets if I, I can bill Uncle Roger, <laughs> I'll, I'll put yeah. Uncle Roger on the bill. So, like, <laughs> you know. Can I put on an orange polo and do 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, bro. Give them what they want, right? Yeah. But um, in an effort to get people to know me as a creator, as, as me as well, just as myself. Yeah. I think there are little things I can do, you know. I'm thinking of few, few video ideas, like Uncle Roger reacts to nephew Nigel's stand-up. Mm. You know, that's oh, an idea. Okay. You know? Or yes. Uncle Roger reviews to nephew Nigel's uh, old rice videos. Mm. And I can roast myself. It becomes very meta. So I'm trying to bleed in myself more into the videos in the future. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that, that should work. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see yeah, how it goes. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. Yes. But uh, I think I think it's funny, right? Yeah, Uncle no, Roger reviews nephew really, Nigel's stand-up. Yeah, yeah. It would work massively well because I think it's like you're saying, like we're in an age now where people, I think what's really sick about what some comics are doing where you're getting this online, especially as a stand-up anyway, mm-hmm. you know, what you can really do now online can really open you up into different avenues across the world. Yeah. Because before like, you know, <clears throat> social media was just like, you have a video that goes viral, but no one could ever trace back to that video. If you think of early viral days, it was just yeah, like- Yeah, Charlie bit my finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, but you know, if that happened now- Yeah. That would be like funny for like a day or two, but you know, like the people that might set up, they, they'll make a, they might, they might make a YouTube channel out of that. Mm. They might make a Facebook channel. They'll find ways to keep, you know, like you, you basically kind of like got to kind of like ride it to the wall, to the wheels fall off. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Of course. Because yeah. I feel like people want the content. You know what I mean? Like, so you just got to give it to them as much as possible. So are you definitely mm. in a place now where you're just like, I'm just going to keep riding this until. I'm just going to ride it. Or are you in a place where you're like, do you know what? One day I'm just going to stop it and I'll never be prepared for it. I think right now I'm still making the videos. I still really enjoy doing the character. Uh, mm. Maybe that day will come and then I'll be like, okay, I'm sick of this. And then I'll just make a goodbye video, Yeah, you know, yeah. on YouTube. You know, that that's the YouTube culture. You just you just say goodbye and you just leave. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, you'll yeah. see comments on your, your last video. Say, oh, I miss him. I miss him. Four <laughs> months, yeah. You know? Uh, so for now, I'm, I'm still, I still really enjoy the character. And I think it allows me to do a lot of really cool things and it allows me to be rude to people and they can't get offended. Basically. The character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the same when I was doing the geezer. I was calling yeah. someone a slack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I did it. I would never say that. <laughs> if you say that, yeah. They would, they would take offense if you said that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the future is going to hold, man. I'll, I'll keep doing it. I think as long as white people keep fucking up Asian food, I think I think I'll keep making videos, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that will never stop. That yeah. will never stop. <laughs> Have you had any um, celebrities reach out to you? Um, yeah, G- Gordon uh, Gordon Ramsay left Ooh, a comment sick. under the video where I reviewed him and yeah, I approved yeah, yeah. of his fried rice, and then yeah. he just left a comment saying, "Hey, good, thank you, uh, glad you approved, Roger." And then um, he has a production company, and then we'll. We'll see. Just talking to them. Nothing's in the in the work. Nothing's set in stone yet. But you know, we'll see what happens from that. Mm. Um, celebrity wise, I think a few Asian celebrities uh, reached out. A lot of influencers, Asian influencers, reached out, and yeah, a lot of YouTubers. Yeah. I started to collab with them. Mm. With YouTubers, I love. I just love watching. And now they are. We're texting. And we're like, oh, let's do this. Let's do this. It's it's so cool, man. Yeah. 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 Oh, Jimmy O Yang re- reached out. You know the Asian guy who was in Silicon Valley. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, yeah. he's a comedian as well, and he said, "Oh, really sick, bro." I was like, "Holy shit! I love you. I love your movies, man." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's crazy how like he's to me he's like the, the, a star. Yeah. But if you look at my Instagram numbers, I'm bigger than him. But he he's like the the star star. So it's yeah, it's yeah, a bit crazy. Yeah. Everything's a bit crazy. Yeah. And you see, like I I seen your um your interview, like I see your interviews, your podcast, and you were talking about cultural appro- appropriation with the character. Um, oh yeah yeah okay um and I, I thought it was really interesting and also very brave of you to to do that because some people you can just kind of just it, it's have you need to ignore it because i'm mm-hmm. like well, i'm not gonna bring it to light if no one's bring it to my i'm not gonna bring it to people's attention if it's not if i'm um, i don't know what i'm saying here i'm not gonna bring it to people's attention mm-hmm. if they don't know about it as such so yeah. um what kind of made you want to speak up about it did you get a so, lot of like like not like backlash but like comments and stuff about that? Uh, not a lot. I, I would say they're a very, very, very minority of people, maybe like 1% out of everybody. So for context for listeners back home, it's uh, Uncle Roger is this character. 
uh, who you know reviews food videos on YouTube, and that he does it with a. It's a very Asian character. It's an Asian accent. He wears an orange polo. He has a belt phone case. Just a middle aged Asian man, and I speak with a strong Asian accent. And I think the accent is what makes people sometimes go, okay, see perpetuating Asian stereotypes, mm. you know, <clears throat> and a, a lot of these cr- uh, criticisms come from Western born Asians. And I can see why, because uh, if you grew up say in the UK or in the US and you look Chinese or East Asian, mm. sometimes you get bullied, you know, because you look different, you sound different. So whenever they hear someone with that accent, it brings them back to uh, the, the kind of getting bullied days. And yeah. they're like, oh no, don't, don't do that. You know, the, Everybody's gonna think they're laughing at us. Everybody's gonna think we all we're all like that. Mm. Uh, so that's why the argument is, oh, Uncle Roger is perpetuating perpetuating Asian stereotypes because he acts in this very you know he speaks in a stereotypical Asian accent. So mm. that's the main criticism that uh, I'm setting Asian people back. But like I, I I've gone into this uh, at length on, on the pod, so I'll try to give a s- summarized version of it. You know, mm. like, and I, I think an accent is not a stereotype. People have accents. Mm. I grew up speaking like Uncle Roger. It's yeah. because I moved to the Western world and my accent neutralized a little bit because you know you had to make you had to fit into society. Mm-hmm. So you learn how to code switch. When I go back with my Malaysian friends, you know the the hiyas, the, all all those words come out, yeah, and I, yeah, yeah. the casual Malaysian slang comes, out, and I sound more like Uncle Roger mm-hmm. when I'm back in Malaysia with people I'm comfortable with. And also, when you move to the Western world, you're not only just fitting in, but Let's face it. You you want to get laid, right? So you you have to. You can't sound like <laughs> Uncle Roger and and get laid. Come on. <laughs> you know? So there's pressure to neutralize your accent to make yourself sound a little bit wider. You know, like who's gonna who's gonna date Uncle Roger? <laughs> you bring him to a restaurant. And he complains about everything. Where your walk? Where your walk? No walk, Kaya. <laughs> Uncle Roger, we're at Starbucks. Shut up. <laughs> we're at Nando's. <laughs> dude, actually, do Uncle Roger go to Nando's, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they sponsor the video. Bang, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also, Uncle Roger is a character based on my life experience. You know, it's modeled after. <clears throat> in Malaysia, you go to these like we call them kopi tiams, which is just like coffee shops. But like, it's very it, it's very commonplace. You go there, people eat, people drink. Hawker centers mainly. Mm. So you you go there and then you'll you'll see this type of middle aged Asian uncle just sitting with the, the leg on the chair, just talking really loudly and having the exact same accent. It's, it's it's my life experience. I grew up speaking like that, and to say that it's racist is very problematic. Also, because sometimes Western born Asians they try to censor uh, the voices of Asians who are from Asia. You know, it's it's a big thing in our community that a Western-born Asian, say their relatives from Asia, comes comes to visit them in the UK, say, uh, they would find a lot of their behaviors weird and gross, and they would think, ugh, why are you so Asian? You know, there's a bit of a negative undertone there. I remember when I first went, first got to the US, didn't know what was happening, right? So I went out to dinner with a few, like, a lot, all of us were Asian, but they were all, like, uh, Asian-American, mm. right? So I went to this restaurant, I ordered hot water, because that's what we did in, in Asia. We, everybody gets hot water, it's very common. So I, I got laughed at because people were like, why are you so, such a fob, such a fob. That's a thing people call fresh off the boat, okay. fob. So I think that's the same mentality here. When they see Uncle Roger, who's an Asian from Asia, who speaks with an Asian accent, which is reasonable, right? An African person from Africa will speak with an African accent. Mm. No, but they see that they're like, oh, he's such a fob. He's, he's putting, putting our people down. It's like, no, that, that's how people are in Asia. Mm. So that's why I think it's not, it, it's not racist. You know, I'm, I'm trying to celebrate the culture I talk about, I, I never make us look less human than we are. I never go like, oh, oh Asian, I eat dog. I have a small penis, you know, I know Kung Fu. You know, I didn't, I don't do any of that. Mm. I try to bring our culture to the world. Say, oh, we all use rice cookers. It's all like little nuances of the culture that, you know, I think are very relatable. The fa- and also the fact that most of my fans are Asians from Asia can tell you that, okay, this character is not racist. If it's a racist character, people from Asia wouldn't like it. Yes. They'll be like, why are you putting our people down? Yeah. So yeah, for all those reasons, I think um, it passes my conscience. That's why I'm happy to talk about it. Any, every time someone has like concerns about this, uh, I'm happy to address it. And to be honest, it's also nice when there's a little bit of controversy that keeps me in the public consciousness, mm. in the debate. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's like free publicity for me. And I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. If anything, I'm celebrating the culture, mm. you know? That's yeah, like yeah. saying, you, know, you do some accents in your skits too, you yeah, know what I mean? But 
nobody complains. It's like that's how you grew up. That's that's your life experience. That's your lens. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And I guess if you're doing it right as well, I think there's a there's the thing. You know, if you're doing accents and you're doing it right, where you're not you're not mocking the culture, but you're you're doing it well enough where you're just like, oh, raw. Like that sounds like someone from where you're where you're where you're um where you're talking about the, the yeah. characters. You know, I've done a a nightclub sketch and the waiter is called Hugo, uh-huh. but where he's from, I don't know. It's just that, what's going on, guys? Anything you need, I'm your guy. Yeah. He can be Portuguese, he can be Spanish. I kind of like my characters. I, I like my audience to, to, oh, that's a Portuguese guy, or that's mm-hmm. a French guy. or Because I'm like, well, I've left it to you. That's your perception now on what you want that character to be. Yeah. But I've done the character enough that you, you get where I'm going with that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, that's another thing too. As creatives, we create something and that we can't control how people view it. You know, if I create Uncle Roger and then a white person comes in, ah, ha, ha, ching, chang, chong, China man, funny. That, that, that wasn't my intention, mm-hmm. but I can't control how racist people will see it. Mm. But does that mean I have to stop creating Uncle Roger because a certain racist group of people will just laugh at the character? No, you know, you can't control how people interpret stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's very true, man. Because I know especially, I think sometimes whenever I've done certain characters, I have, I have, I will, I've often had people say, oh, like the Roadman guy, you're making... You're making guys from the ends look like look, look dumb and that, and I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm reading a bedtime story. Yeah. Like this is a kid's story, mm-hmm. and I'm interpreting it in a way that someone would read this story. More like mm-hmm. this is that like, when I do those stories, it's how would us as adults really tell that story? Mm-hmm. And what I like about my roadman character, it brings the truth to the story. So if it's you know, uh, you know Bernard, um, not now Bernard, which is a classic kind of kid's story about kid who wants food not now his parents are but then you i break down things in the story where i'm like raw like child neglect like Mm -hmm. but it's in a way which is a cbb story so there's a lot of things in there where you're like oh i've never seen it like that (coughs) oh my god that 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 kind of makes sense what you're saying the hungry hungry caterpillar caterpillar. Mm -hmm. like it's a normal kid story but you look at it now and you're like raw this this caterpillar was (laughs) fucking eating bro yeah (laughs) like like do we promote that to kids? Is that the right message? Just keep eating kids. You'll be a butterfly one day. Yeah. You won't. You'll be a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I, if, if, um, so the criticism towards me, if, if applied to your case, mm. they would say, oh, don't do the accent, man. They're going to think all black people sound like that. Mm. It's like, no, no, yes. that's, that's not your intention. Your intention mm-hmm. is to highlight the story, but there's going to be racist people, but yeah, they all, they all think and sound like that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Fuck, fuck those people, right? You can't, yeah. you can't let them control what your content's going to be, mm. you know? And for your stand up, have you ever found when you've done stand up, especially in the UK, mm-hmm. have you ever got ne- like, ne- how, have you ever like, in terms of you being heckled? Because me as a comic, I never really got heckled because sometimes there's the perceptions that, oh, as a comic, you must get heckled all the time. Mm-hmm. But a lot of my material didn't really allow it. And I think there's this weird thing, like, yeah, whenever you, I, you have an MP3 player. <laughs> it's like, heckling, just play music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to handle it. Hey, play that track. Yeah. No one heard it, bro. <laughs> play, play that mom dance song. How, how do you handle hecklers? I have a Walkman. <laughs> I use a Walkman. <laughs> They can't hear me over these sound effects, yeah. boy. <laughs> I'm gonna bring. I have a roadcaster too with like buttons. I'm gonna bring to my shows now. Boo! 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 You're rubbish. Yeah. Oh, here comes another song. Yeah. Slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you fucking shit. My mom dances like this. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> He just turned the volume up to drown out the echoes. Put your warm bass in the speakers. They can't hear it. (laughs) Oh, man. So to clear up what we're talking about is basically when I perform, I'd have a lot of tracks. So I used to have have an iPad. So I used to roll around with an iPad. And it was so funny because I'd go to these small shows like in like Southampton or wherever. And you know that when you do comedy, all that it's just like, yeah, the mic. You don't do a mic check. You just go on there. And that's what you do as a comic. Mm-hmm. But me now, I turn up and I'd be like, <laughs> you've got the guy running it. I'm like, hi, do you know who's doing the sound? Uh, yeah, I think Paul's doing it. Great, because I've got an iPad. Um, have you got an aux cable? A lot of them would always say, no, I don't have an aux. I'm like, okay, uh, well, we've got an XLR into mini jack. Can that work? You bring your own gear. I brought all my own <laughs> wires. I used to bring an iPad with a, with a sound cue app on it. 
So you could just tap it. I used to bring a CD and an MP3 all in my Ooh. bag and a laptop as well. So there would there would never be a chance unless yeah. they was like, yeah, we only play music on VHS. Yeah. <laughs> that's was like the only way it couldn't work. I'd bring an aux cable. Oh, I'd bring every old sound man. guy, a mixing board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd bring... replace the guy. And the maddest thing is I'd say to them, look, when I say this joke, if you can play this track, and you know, these are guys who are just like, yeah, um, so what do you want to do? Just, it's, it's a sound cue. It's got the track. Just press it. And he's like, yeah, um, but I might mess it up. I'm like, I'm going to tell you when to play it on stage. Yeah. I'll be on stage like, yeah, because when you go out and, you know, there's a song like a hip hop song. Technician, <laughs> can you play that? I literally do that. Uh, sometimes once, I never get once. I was like, I had a hip hop track, right? Uh -huh. And it was on the iPad. So I said, um, you know, when you go out, what is that going to a club? And, you know, you hear a bit of hip hop, right? It's all set up on the iPad. We've sat up for ages. I'm like, technician, can you give me a hip hop track? It just makes it sound a bit more like it flows. Like he's got so I'm I'm making this is your time to look good. Like, bloody hell. The technician had gigs talking the hardest. Who would have thought it? <laughs> like, he looks like he plays guitar. Like, but that's for him to make him look good. Uh -huh. Instead, this guy was like, Yeah, sure. Man starts playing some next hip hop track. I'm like, this isn't um okay. Well, that illusion is not gonna work. Um <laughs> so I'm on stage like, um, yeah, if you could stop that and play the one on the iPad, I gave you. <laughs> so <laughs> but it's all music. Bro. So yeah, he just wants any random hip hop track. <laughs> the bad times where I'm like, the fuck are you doing? That's not the track. One time he played a song, yeah? And I still <laughs> had to do the joke, but to another track. But the whole point of the punchline is that there's something in that track. Like, for example, there's a song by Ace Hood. I woke up in a new Bugatti. So it's like, I think the, the joke is like, oh, there's always dance. There's always dances to a new track. The whole point is mm -hmm. I have this, this dance. So it's like, I woke up in a new Bugatti. That's the dance. Mm -hmm. I woke up. Anyway, DJ, play me a hip hop song. He played some next random Nicki Minaj track. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, you know when you're, um, yeah, if you could just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, because this ain't gonna work. <laughs> and it's so annoying, because the audience are looking at me like, bro, what the, what were you trying to do? You did too much. You yeah, did he, way too much. He's, how can you fuck up pressing a button? Oh you know? man. And the button probably says hip hop track on yeah, it, literally, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's got the track, you press it. <laughs> or sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the iPad had this thing where you tap it and it will play. Mm -hmm. And then to stop, I'd always say to them, look, on the iPad, press the stop button to stop it. Cool. So I'll be like, yeah, man, kill that man. This guy has, when you press it again, it loops back to the beginning. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, kill that man. Cause I'm just smashed it now. So I'm like, yeah, kill that man. Kill that. Did you? I'm like, no, 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 no. Kill that, kill yeah. that. Press the stop button. Press stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, and I'm like, yeah, if you press the stop button at the top on the iPad, cheers. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's <laughs> my, that's my time guys. <laughs> it, kills, it kills all the illusion. Oh. It kills your whole soul, yeah. man. <laughs> what's what, what, what's your what's your worst gig you've ever had? Ah, uh, Butlin's Minehead. Easy, <laughs> yeah. easy. I have a whole six minute routine of it <laughs> on my YouTube channel that yeah. um, uh, people seem to like. Uh, man, I, I don't even know what went wrong. First guy I went out, Mick Ferry, very very funny comic. Mm. Did did well, smashed it. He was MCs and his material smashed it. And I went on. Fuck me, nothing. That's nothing was getting anything and five minutes five minutes in it started booing me he booed you yeah boo boo oh, people are mate. drinking a few plastic cups started getting thrown on the yeah yeah wow uh some guy was just trying to climb on the stage and then security had to come and oh I, I, at first i was like uh i don't care you guys can boo me all you want i'm still gonna do my 20 minutes <laughs> to get paid <laughs> <laughs> but then, because... on the corner of my eye <laughs> but is that thing as a comic where you're like if I walk off, I may not get paid. But yeah. if I keep doing my 20 minutes, then I've said, well, I've done the 20, innit? No yeah. one said I had to be good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I just kept going and I kept saying, <laughs> I had a line that I thought was really funny. I, I established I'm from Malaysia and everything, right? From Asia, from a developing country. So I had a line in there that was like, uh, um, I used to be a child soldier. You can't hurt me. Which I <laughs> thought was pretty funny. But <laughs> when I said that, they're like, boo, <laughs> boo, you weren't a child soldier. You're lying to us. <laughs> 
<laughs> what was this? Like an adults weekend or yeah, something? It wasn't that dark. <laughs> Man, it was 3 p.m. They were all drunk off their tits. <laughs> yeah. My God, and how, where, where are these people? Right? <laughs> and later I learned that, you know, the UK took in refugees, right? Yeah. There was a refugee crisis. And they housed them at the Butlins. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. The refugees are going to want to go back to where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> to see the, the people there, man. <laughs> Fuck. And Butlins isn't even cheap. It's like 120 pounds a night. <laughs> Yeah. You can't go to Portugal for that money. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a Ryanair flight to somewhere in Spain, but Alicante or somewhere. Yeah. I had, I had a joke in the whole routine. Uh, it's a bunch of the people in there. It's a bunch of shaved heads and white t-shirts. Uh, you know, it's the business casual version of the KKK outfit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you, know, you go up there, you're like, ooh, boy. So I was, I was on stage and I, you know, I was just trying to, I'm going to do 20 anyway. But then at the corner of my eye, I saw the security guard and he was telling me to get off. Get oh, off. That, you know that's bad when the security gets involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mate, if you just want to stop, man, it's getting, there's not enough of us to protect you. What? What, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> They're scared for me. It's <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm still going to get paid, but I'm just not too sure about yourself, mate. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm and then never... I, I got off stage. That was yeah. the interval. And then next was the noise next door. And they smashed it. So it's like, no no rhyme or reason. Yeah. Uh, I think it just wasn't what they were looking for, you know, for some reason yeah, or another. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's a whole routine of that. On, on If you Google Nigel Ung Butlins. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever it. had any mad heckles? Mad heckles? Uh, not really, man. Just people booing me. me, booing me. Yeah. You know, your shit, mate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you handle it as a comic, though? I'm so intrigued to see how other comics... Handle their heckles. It depends on the situation, right? Yeah. Like if you're, honestly, if, if you are, if the crowd is already on your side and you're making them laugh and it's just one person who doesn't like you, you can just say, shut the fuck up and you'll get an applause break, right? Mm. Because if, as long as you're on your side. <laughs> the trick is getting them on your side. If no, nobody's <laughs> on your side, you're like, there's no, you, there's no witty line. Even the child soldier <laughs> line got nothing. <laughs> which was... <laughs> Man, I remember doing a gig yeah. at Angel Comedy Club. Uh -huh. You know, Angel is such a nice place to gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember doing this joke, and because you know, well, basically with Angel Comedy Club, you do two, you do two rooms. So you do mm -hmm. the one upstairs in the pub, and you do the one around the corner. So I've done the one upstairs in the pub, and I'm telling this joke, and I remember like the guy had finished my punchline for me. Oh. So already I'm pissed off now, isn't it? Because I'm ready to say the punchline. I'm like. I've got my pause break. Say the punchline. He said it. Then I've said it. So then I was like, <sighs> so I was just like, shut up, man. Fucking dickhead, man. Yeah. Thinking people would laugh. But you know, Angel's very much like people who don't really go to comedy shows. It's like, yeah, I'm just on a date. It's taking uh, her ear, innit? It's like, it's different on it's a date. So I was like, bro, shut the fuck up, man. And the whole crowd was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was immediately like, oh, he's from the streets. Maybe we thought, he, we thought he was a charming young <laughs> comic <laughs> on the road to success, but he's from the streets. <laughs> it's <just> like <laughs> maybe they, he, they didn't get that he was stepping on your punchlines or something. Maybe he was like, oh no, 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 no. Trying like, to help. you know, that like angel's so small, uh -huh. like you can hear a oh, pin drop. Yeah, true, 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 true. And true. I remember he said the punchline. I was like, oh, bro, shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, thinking it would get like a laugh. Yeah, and not one person laughs, and it was just more like. So I was like, but yeah, man. So yeah, crazy the Drinking. weather in it. Hangovers get worse, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I lost them. Yeah. Oh, I lost them so much, man. Uh, we, I mean, we've I, all been there, man. We've all been once like this mm -hmm. guy heckled me. I said something like, I said something like, "Oh, I'm from Peckham," and the guy was like, "Oi, oi, no, no, yeah." He was like, "Oi, oi," but I'm so defensive. Huh? I'm like, I'm like, bruv, what? Who said that? Carry on. My friends aren't going to be outside and they're going to rob you. <laughs> like, people, no one laughed. It was almost like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, no, nah, just joking, man. Yeah. We don't rob people. Not at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I came by myself and I was, it was just meant to be a joke. Yeah. But the audience was like, oh, oh my God, he is. Oh, shit. Put your keys in your bum, Philip. <laughs> shit. <laughs> He's a real shooter. <laughs> where, where was that gig? It was that, not that was in Peckham, the, I assume. That was at Up the Creek. Oh, okay. that was at Up the Creek. Yeah, I've had some, oh, I've had some fun gigs there, man. 
Yeah, that's a, that's a good club, man. It is. Yeah, it you is. had me on that one, uh, Mo Gilligan and Friends yes. show. Yeah, that was super yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, fun, yeah. Fun, fun, fun. It's a yeah. really fun place to gig. I remember once gigging there and a fight broke out halfway between one of the other comics. Mm-hmm. So I had just done my middle set. Fight broke out the other comic. Uh, Jeff mm-hmm. Innocent. Was yeah. One. Fight broke mm-hmm. out halfway through and um, it's like lights go on. And this is the, thir- the first time I'd ever performed at like a mainstream comedy club and seen white people fighting. <laughs> I've seen it at Black Comedy Nights where it was just like, well, you know, they had beef with them and they had beef with them. Gonna fight, yeah, innit? Yeah. Where, like, seeing this at like a white comedy now, I was like, oh shit, this ain't even beef. Yeah. These guys just wanted to fight. <laughs> <laughs> like, at least at the Black Comedy Night, there was already tension in the room. So it was like, we must squash it here, old school, like a jewel. How you would in the Western times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But these white people just like, I want to fight. <laughs> Fucking hell, fight him. And I was like, why? <laughs> why are you fighting? It was over something so stupid. I remember they got up, they started fighting. And it's so weird because when fights break out at a black comedy night, right? You know, everyone just moves back. <gasps> oh my God. Because, you know, you know, they're not just fighting just to fight. Like, they're, they're must, it got, we reached there. Uh-huh. We have to do, this is like, I'm talking like Shakespeare. Mercutio and Romeo, them kind of vibes that we must settle this here. This has been ongoing for years. Uh-huh. <laughs> so everyone's just like, oh man, shit, it's a fight. But then everyone knows why this fight is happening. Like it was like, well, they're not just fighting because he stepped on his shoe. You know, because that's mm. sometimes a perception. You go to a black night, you step on a black guy's shoe, he'll fucking kill you. I'm like, no, you won't. <laughs> like, you might get smacked up in the face a little bit, but it ain't gonna kill you, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so we we did, man. What's your guy, man? <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry. But, and, that, and that's the thing, like, when, when fights have happened at, like, black comedy shows I've been to, it's just like, cool, it's a fight. And that's it. Like, because, you know, for us, it's just like, well, looks like that club is going to get closed down. So, yeah. um, well, <laughs> just again, they give up and they take up away. Because that's yeah. just what you're used to as such. But a white comedy night, I'm like, what oppression is going on here? Like, we're going to this black comedy show to leave the oppression and laugh. <laughs> Whereas in this white comedy show, there's no oppression. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I'm going to have a laugh. Yeah. I'm going to have a laugh. <laughs> it's been a good week of privilege. Yeah. I'm going to have a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what could they be fighting about? <laughs> so then these yeah. guys started fighting. And it's like, no one was really like, like, uh, like shocked. You know, black comedy, everyone's moving back. Uh-huh. Oh my God, are you all right? White comedy nights is like, so is the show still going on then? Yeah. Because <laughs> I've paid my money. <laughs> and part of me's like, well, his face is bleeding. Like, is there no, like, no one cares? I don't understand what's going on. Here. I mean, it happens a lot in their circles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah. but I know guys who've gone out, and like, especially white guys, the geezer, have gone out. Mm. Oh, it was a great night, mate. Great night, mate. Got into a fight, got a black eye. Geezer comes from out, knocked him out. Yeah. Great, great night. Great night. <laughs> a great night. <laughs> That no black person has ever got into a fight and said it's been a great night. Yeah. Because you know <laughs> that there could be some place where you'd be working in Argos mm. and you see it up and you're like, oh man, I had a fight with this guy in the club, bro. God, take off the Argos <laughs> t-shirt. <laughs> Swing over the counter and rock your out. Because <laughs> now he knows where I'll work. <laughs> Because it'll be super awkward. Take it'll be the like, name tag and it'll be super yeah. awkward. Like number four one two to your collection point, please. Yeah. Okay, so you're getting the air fryer, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, what happened, my brother? It's mad, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. but <laughs> we had to rock it out. Like. <laughs> I like Argos too because to go to the cashier you have to buy something. So yeah. he saw it. Okay, I'm gonna buy an air fryer today. So I confront yeah. him again. Yeah. And then you key in the number so you can find B two six four. And then you gotta check if it's in stock. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta go to the big ass catalog. I'm gonna fight you for sure. And you just <laughs> flip, flip. And then, then you might get served by the wrong person. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Where's that guy in the back? No, 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 I want him to serve me. Oh, yeah. Just to see if you reckon it. Yeah. Remember yeah. me, yeah? yeah. No, I don't remember you, bro. You, know. you don't remember me. <laughs> this eye, I lost this eye. I have no clue how you lost that eye, bro. Yeah. I just woke up. <gasps> oh, oh, shit. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, mate. <sighs> 
not happen in the white community, boy. I like What the fuck have you done? Yeah. What's happening, fella? Good to see you, man. <laughs> Bloody hell, you only fucking broke my arm. Yeah. yeah. That's a wank with the left hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get wank with a cast on, <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, man. Good punch up, though. Good punch up. <laughs> Bloody hell, you're, you're right, Hook. You've got something there. You want to start boxing. My old mate Ricky runs a boxing club in Birmingham. You want to get down there, son? <laughs> Not in the black community, boy. <sighs> oh, Nigel, man. Yeah. But honestly, man, it's been such a pleasure just to have you on the podcast. Just talk about your success as well. Like, and just honestly, like, congratulations. Thank you, man. I know, you, you know, when you're in the field of doing stand up and, you know, now we're in this place where you can't really just do stand up. Do you know what I mean? You have to look at other ways you can get your comedy out there. Podcasts, mm -hmm. whether it's YouTube or doing stuff on Instagram characters. And like, you've been like testament to that. And congratulations. Thanks. So thank you. Thank you. That's like a big deal, man. Um, and what's, what's coming up next? What can we, what can we expect next from you, dude? Okay, next thing, next. More videos on my YouTube channel. Keep growing that. And hopefully some uh, other more ambitious projects that involve um, not just me fucking with the camera in my room. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know getting, getting maybe some scripts together, some non-scripted ideas. But who knows with all those stuff, there's oh, going to be a huge development phase and who knows what will happen. Yeah. But at the very least, you know, I'm just going to keep making videos and hopefully the videos get better. Mm -hmm. Uh just just that really keep being funny keep making stuff people want to watch yeah just subscribe yeah hit subscribe ring the bell all the stuff <laughs> yeah make sure you as, like and subscribe as i like to say uh, you know smack the like button smack the like button like how your parents smack you you know <laughs> that's my little catchphrase now <laughs> I'm still, you know what it is when i say like and subscribe mm -hmm. i feel like it's like but let's see it bro if you don't see it will subscribe so i'm like i don't know if they do though man but then I'll say it. I feel like if I don't say it, then they won't do it. Yeah. If I say it, then they're like, because you know it's that weird thing where sometimes when you tell when you watch like YouTube, he's like, guys, make sure you subscribe. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> but now you've told me it's so uncool. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember I done one first one YouTube video, mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah, subscribe if you want to, but if you don't want to, it's fine. Then I was like, yeah, man needs these subs so boy, yeah, you man needs to start clicking yeah. that. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> stop watching stop clicking man but nah man it's been such yeah. a pleasure so thank you for coming on the pod I really really appreciate that um, yes and if you did enjoy it, make sure you use the hashtag the Mo Gilligan podcast make sure you like and subscribe on all good platforms and yeah man take care and we'll see you on the next episode peace